Hello and welcome, welcome to this video brought to you by Smart Exam Resources. In today's video, I shall explain to you a large number of concepts from stoichiometry, and rather it is complete stoichiometry. Of course, I'm covering every concept, but I won't be explaining to you the stoichiometry definitions because all of them are present in my previous video. There is no change in the definition, so therefore you can watch my previous video if you want to go through the definitions, the way you have to write them. I'll be explaining concentration, limiting and excess reagents, molecular mass, relative atomic mass, molar gas volume, and empirical and molecular formula. Now, all the questions that I'm solving are taken from IGCSC past papers for chemistry, that is 0620, and they are from the extended curriculum. Also, you will be needing a copy of periodic table, so you can pull down a PDF from the net, uh, the last page of every chemistry paper. For extended has got um, a periodic table printed. So take a screenshot if you want on your mobile. So when you're watching my video, you can actually refer to it if you are wanting to find the MRs of uh, of uh, a few things like okay, of uh, uh, MRs of uh, say for example elements like uh, aluminium, phosphorus, whatever, sulfur, etc. And to the right of the screen, I've put marking schemes. So once you're done with the um, answering of the questions. You can play my video, you can watch the marking scheme, you can correct your answers with the marking schemes, okay? Fine. So now, let's begin. The first question says, ammonia reacts with oxygen as shown. There's an equation given for ammonia reacting with oxygen. And we have been told, calculate the volume of oxygen at room temperature and pressure in cubic decimeters that reacts with 4.80 cubic decimeters of ammonia. Okay. Now, whenever they give you a stoichiometry sum, make it a habit, always write down the mole ratio, okay? And mole ratio of what you're going to write down? Between the things that they're comparing. Here they're comparing oxygen and ammonia. So I will be focusing on only those two things, okay? Now I'm going to zoom. Okay. Okay. So now, let me write down the ideal mole ratio. Sorry for that. Okay. The ideal mole ratio. Okay, between ammonia and oxygen. Ideally, it is 4 is to 5. If I want to compare in terms of 1, it is going to be 1 is to 5 by 4. How did I get this? I took the smallest of the two moles, 4 and 5, which is smaller, 4 is the smallest one. I divided 4 by 4 and 5 by 4, so that I could get the ratio in the form of 1 is to something, okay? So the ideal mole ratio is 1 is to 5 by 4. What does that mean? That means for every 1 mole of ammonia, there are 5.4 moles of oxygen, okay? Now what have they given us about ammonia? They have told us only the volume of ammonia, okay? So and the conditions are RTP. So at RTP, what do you know? You know that at RTP, one mole occupies 24 dm cube, right? One mole occupies 24 dm cube. So how many moles will occupy 4.80 dm cube? What am I talking about? I'm talking about ammonia. Okay. How do I find out the moles of ammonia? I do that by uh, okay, let me just not skip any step here. So therefore, I can say 24x is equal to 4.80 or my x is equal to 4.80 divided by 24. And how much is that? 4.80 divided by 24. Let me just plug in fast. 4.80 divided by 24. That is 1 upon 5. That is 0 0.2. So ideally, the person had taken 0 0.2 moles of ammonia. Okay. And... Now, we want to find out the volume of oxygen. So, you know, for finding the volume of oxygen, again, you'll make use of the RTP thing. For oxygen, again, at RTP, what happens? One mole, sorry, one mole occupies 24 dm cube. So, if you knew the moles of oxygen, you could have found out the volume of oxygen. So, can we find out the moles of oxygen? Yes. We know the ideal mole ratio. So from the ideal mole ratio, for every one mole, see for every one mole of ammonia, you have 5 upon 4 moles of oxygen. 
so therefore for every 0.2 moles you will have 0.2 into 5 upon 4 how much is that 0.2 into 5 divided by 4 that gives you 0. Point, sorry 0. 0.2 into 5 equals divided by 4 that gives you 0. 0.25 moles so you have 0. 0.25 moles okay i'm just writing this properly one second 0. 0.2 into 5 upon 4 equals 0. 0.25 so what are the moles of uh, oxygen basically that they've taken they've taken 0. 0.25 moles so therefore for 0. 0.25 moles what's the volume volume is x so therefore how do you find this you find x is equal to 0. 0.25 multiplied by 24 which gives you how much 0. 0.25 multiplied by 24 is 6 so what is the volume of oxygen that was used volume of oxygen is 6 dm cube okay so, so it is that simple what did i do i took the uh, mole ratio the ideal mole ratio and then i found out the moles of ammonia first and from the moles of ammonia i found the moles of oxygen and once i knew the moles of oxygen i found out the volume of oxygen by multiplying the moles by 24 okay so this is how you are going to solve this sum and it is very simple so let me just take my answers it is um six volume is 6 correct oh sorry they've written moles of oxygen this should have been written as volume of oxygen small error in the marking scheme but it's still fine we know what it is okay fine so we solved the first question now going to the next question next question tells you what phosphorus forms another compound with hydrogen with the following composition by mass so phosphorus has a composition by mass of 93.94 percent and hydrogen has 6.06 percent so you need to find the empirical formula so the, a small trick i'll be telling you here is to find out the empirical formula always write down the elements so suppose my elements are if i want to write these elements i will say okay my elements are phosphorus and hydrogen now write down the percent by mass how much is the percent by mass percent by composition you may say or whatever composition by mass sorry or percent by mass is still fine so 93.94 is phosphorus and 6.06 is hydrogen now over here do you know the mass um do you know the mr of phosphorus if you look at the periodic table you will find that the mr of phosphorus if you do not know i'll show you how to find the mr this will be ar basically uh so phosphorus phosphorus is here it is 31 okay this number here down is 31 so technically speaking i'm going to write mr as 31 for phosphorus and hydrogen obviously you know is one so what is the moles what are the moles of phosphorus how do you find the moles you do how do you find the moles pause the video and think mass is equal to moles into mr moles is equal to mass upon mr so what's my mass my mass is 93.94 and my mr is 31 okay so 93.94 divide by 31 that gives me how much 3.03 i'll just shift this hydrogen a bit to the right it was 6.06 .06 and this was 1 and what are the moles of hydrogen moles of hydrogen are again the mass by um, 1 that is 6.06 .06 by 1 which is again 6.06 .06. okay so now can i reduce this uh, these moles into the smallest number if i can see um the hydrogen moles are double that of phosphorus okay because 3.03 into 2 gives you what it gives you 6.06 .06. so the mole ratio is ideally 1 is to 2 so once i know the mole ratio i can easily write my empirical formula so the empirical formula is what write your elements okay and whatever moles you have got here i got the moles of phosphorus as 1 i'm going to write this as my subscript whatever moles of hydrogen are there those will go as a subscript of hydrogen and nobody writes p1 h2 rather it is written as ph2 
so what is the empirical formula for this particular compound it is ph2 are you getting it isn't it simple yes now the compound has a relative molecular mass of 66 meaning whatever is the compound this ph2 okay the mr of that compound so mr of the compound of the actual compound what i have written is ph2 it is a reduced one so mr of the compound is how much 66 that's what they've given and they're telling us to find out the molecular formula of the compound so now what is the mr of the empirical formula if you can tell me mr of this ph2 is how much phosphorus was 31 hydrogen is 1 so two hydrogens mean meaning 31 plus 2 which is 33 so technically you know the empirical formula mass for um pH2 which is 33 so 33 is for the empirical formula empirical formula mass multiplied by some number should give you the actual molecular compound mass so which is the number which multiplied by 33 gives you 66 that is 2 so technically whatever is your pH2 you got your pH2 over here uh, sorry for that so you got your um once again sorry Okay, okay you you, you had this pH two here, here. So, so you, you are, are going to multiply this by two to, to get the actual, actual molecular formula. formula. Okay, okay, and that, that is going, going to be P two H four. Understood what I did? I'll, I'll once again repeat it for you. So, so see, you, you have, have a compound, compound which is made up of phosphorus and hydrogen. Okay, okay. First, first thing they told you to find out the empirical formula. Then after you found the empirical formula, they are now asking you to find the molecular formula of the compound. Now, Now always for finding the empirical formula, formula first find the moles of the, of the particular elements. elements. So, so what whichever way I explained, okay, uh, you are going, going to find out the moles of uh, the part, elements, elements like phosphorus and hydrogen. Okay, okay. and, and if you find the moles, reduce them in the lowest uh, possible mole ratio. So you are the lowest possible mole ratio was one is to two. Okay, and those moles go as the subscript of the particular elements, and that is how you get the Uh, empirical, empirical formula of the compound. Now, Now always remember, I'll give you another um, shortcut. See, this is not a formula. I'm just uh, creating my own formula. You may say. So technically, you can just put it. Like suppose, if you uh, forget how to find out the molecular formula from the empirical formula, it's very simple. So first is you write down the empirical formula mass. So always say empirical formula mass into some number. will give you the molecular formula mass molecular formula mass okay so whatever number you get in this box whatever number you get here okay that you are going to use to multiply the empirical formula so empirical formula in our case was ph2 okay so that ph2 we multiplied by which number we found that sorry So sorry for this. Mm. Okay, sorry for that. Ab extremely sorry for that. So basically, we found that the empirical formula mass of pH two was thirty three. Okay. Then we found that thirty three multiplied by two would give me sixty six, which was my molecular formula mass. Now this number two that I've got here, I use this number two to multiply my empirical formula. So this becomes P two. And H two into two gives me H four. So this is how you need to remember that empir empirical formula mass into some number should give you the molecular formula mass. Whatever that number is, once you identify that number, use that number to multiply the empirical formula. And once you multiply that number with the empirical formula, what you get is your molecular formula. It's very simple. Okay. So this is P two H four. Okay. Now let us check. Over here, pH two is correct, P two H four is correct. Okay, fine. Now let's go to the next question. Okay. Dilute sulfuric acid reacts with aqueous sodium hydrogen carbonate in a neutralization reaction. Okay. So this is sulfuric acid. This is sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay. These two are reacting in a neutralization reaction, meaning salt water are formed, and it's a carbonate, so salt water and carbon dioxide also are formed. in a titration 
जीरो पॉइंट टू जीरो जीरो मोल्स पर क्यूबिक डेसीमीटर सो दिस इज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन गिवन टू यू वाई एम आई सेंग कॉन्सेंट्रेशन बिकॉज मोल्स पर क्यूबिक डेसीमीटर इज अ यूनिट ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ वॉट इज गिवन टू यू सोडियम हाइड्रोजन कार्बोनेट इज गिवन टू यू सो फॉर एन ए एच सी ओ थ्री एन ए एच सी ओ थ्री वॉट इज गिवन टू मी द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज गिवन टू मी सी इज गिवन टू मी एज जीरो पॉइंट टू जीरो जीरो आई जस्ट राइट इट नॉट योर बट बिकॉज आई बी यूटिलाइजिंग द होल स्पेस ओवर योर or maybe i can just uh, zoom my screen yeah i'll do that okay so for nah co3 what is given to me concentration is given to me as 0.200 okay moles per dm cube and what is given to me for a uh, sulfuric acid h2so4 the volume is given to me as 20.0 cm cube the moment you see cm cube you're going to divide it by a uh, 1000 to get uh, in dm cube okay i'll just erase and write in small because uh, i'll be using my entire place and i won't have sufficient space to write my answer just give me a minute okay i've written it down So, so I'm going to change this uh, cubic, cubic centimeters into cubic decimeters by dividing by thousand. So that is going to be zero point zero two zero dm cube. Okay, because the units have to be the same. And concentration is given to you as zero point one five zero moles per dm cube. Okay. Calculate the number of moles of dilute sulfuric acid used in the titration. So I have concentration. I have moles. And uh, what is concentration? Concentration is nothing but moles. Okay, okay upon, upon volume. volume. So, so therefore, therefore, I can find the moles by multiplying the concentration by volume. So, so what is the concentration? Zero point one five zero, and what is the volume? Zero point zero two zero. And how much do I get? Just, let me just check. So zero point one five zero into zero point zero two zero, and that is nothing but zero point zero zero three. Zero point zero zero three. So this answer is zero point zero zero three. How simple, right? Calculate the number of moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate needed. Okay. Before I do that, let me look at the ideal mole ratio. Ideal mole ratio is one is to two. Between what? Between sulfuric acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay. Now, so again I'm writing it down over here. H two SO four is to NaHCO three. And that's, and that's giving me how much? One is to two, two right? right? But, But sulfuric acid moles are zero point zero zero three. So obviously, if the, if the moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate are double those of sulfuric acid, this is, this is going to be two into zero point zero zero three, and that is nothing but zero point zero zero six. So here the moles are zero point zero zero six. Fine. Okay. okay. Now. Now. Calculate, calculate the volume in cubic centimeters. centimeters. Now, Now look at the catch. They are, they are asking us in cubic decimeters all the time. Suddenly they are asking us volume in cubic centimeters. centimeters. Never mind. Concentration, concentration is given to us in moles per cubic decimeters. So this, so this is concentration volume they want to know. And okay. okay. So, calculate so calculate the volume in cubic decimeters. So we know the concentration. Concentration is C, which is equal to zero point. 200 moles per cubic decimeters this i'm talking about nhco3 okay this is all for nhco3 what are the moles of nhco3 i just found out moles are so number of moles n is equal to 0.006 so now i need to find out the volume okay so volume How do, How do you find the volume? Look at, Look at the definite uh, the, the formula I'm highlighting here. Concentration, concentration is equal to moles, moles upon, upon volume. Okay, okay if concentration, concentration is equal to moles upon volume, so mol volume is mole upon concentration. Moles is how much? Zero point zero zero six divided by concentration is how much? Zero point two zero zero. Okay. Now let me see how much I'm getting. So zero point zero 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 six. Divided, divided by 0.200 that gives me 0.03 now this is in cubic decimeters because all my previous units were in cubic decimeters now i want to find out 
in cubic centimeters so i'm going to multiply by 1000 so here i'm going to say 0.03 into 1000 that gives me 30 cubic centimeters so do not forget to convert in this way okay, okay? so you so what did we find out we found out the um volume basically or the moles whatever we found out we use the formula for concentration like i told you earlier you can find the moles in different ways so here we use the formula for concentration okay and everywhere if you can see i have tagged the questions now this belongs to concentration and moles the previous one belonged to empirical and molecular formula okay so that way even you can keep a track of everything okay let us, let us match the answers, the answers. so 0.003 0 0.006 and 30 and 0.003 0.006 and 30 all are correct fine, fine. Okay. okay now, now coming, coming to the next one, one. okay, okay. I, hope i hope you are uh, pausing, pausing the video and trying to solve in your own that will help you and now, and now moving ahead Magnesium sulfate crystals are hydrated. I'll just uh, zoom because I won't get enough space to write. Magnesium sulfate crystals are hydrated. Another 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 student heated some hydrated magnesium sulfate crystals in a crucible and obtained the following results. So there is a hydrated magnesium sulfate, meaning it is containing traces of water. And another student heated some magnesium uh, sulfate crystals in a crucible. So it's heating. That means there is water being removed from it. So they have noted the measurements. Mass of the hydrated magnesium sulfate crystals were 4.92 grams. Okay. And mass, and mass of the water removed was 2.52 grams. Calculate, Calculate the number of moles of water removed. So you need to find out the number of moles of water. Okay. okay. So, what so what has been given to us? We have been told the mass of water. So for water, we know the mass is 2.52 grams. And do we know the MR of water? MR of water? MR of water is AR of hydrogen plus AR of oxygen. There are two hydrogens, so two into AR of hydrogen. So that is going to be two. Two plus sixteen. Okay, that is eighteen. So MR is going to be eighteen technically. So now I need to find out the moles. How do I find the moles? So I know that mass equals moles into MR. So moles is equal to mass upon MR. So mass divided by MR. And mass, and mass is how much? 2.52 divided by MR is 18. How much is 2.52 divided by 18? 2.52 divided by 18. That gives me 0.14. So what are the moles of water removed? 0.14 of water are removed. Okay. 0.14 moles of water are removed. Calculate the number of moles of anhydrous magnesium sulfate remaining in the crucible. So if you look on the top. You will, you will find that, that there is a mass of hydrated magnesium sulfate crystals, meaning magnesium sulfate along with traces of water. When water is removed, what is left then? Anhydrous magnesium sulfate will remove, uh, will uh, will remain. So technically, I need to first find out the mass of anhydrous uh, magnesium sulfate. So mass of anhydrous magnesium Sulfate. sulfate how much is that that's, that's equal, equal to 4.92 minus 2.52 and that is how much 4.92 minus 4.92 minus 2.52 that gives me 12 by 5 which is 2.4 it gives me 2.4 grams okay so 2.5 grams of uh, anhydrous magnesium sulfate were left and do i know the mr of uh, in hydrous magnesium sulfate yeah yeah that has been given to me that is equal to 120 so now i need to find out the moles okay what is the moles of anhydrous magnesium sulfate once again moles is equal to mass upon mr so moles equals mass divided by mr mass is how much Mass is 2.4. 2.4 divided by MR, which is 120. Let me just delete this. 2.4. Ah, delete on my calcy. Sorry, yeah. 2.4 divided by 120, which is equal to 1 by 50, which is 0.02. So 
so 0.02 so, 0.02. so, what, are so what are the moles of anhydrous magnesium sulfate they are 0.02 moles right now they are telling us calculate the ratio of the moles of anhydrous magnesium sulfate to the moles of water so my moles of anhydrous magnesium sulfate and moles of water how, how much are they so moles of water are 0.14 and uh, anhydrous magnesium sulfate is 0.02 so if i divide both the sides by 0.02 what do i get that's how you find out the mole ratio so i get 0.14 divided by 0.02 which is 7 so the mole ratio is nothing but 1 is to 7 so this is 1 is to 7 simple isn't it Okay. okay. Now, now suggest, suggest the formula, formula for hydrated magnesium sulfate crystals. So see, it's very, it's very simple. simple. For the for hydrated, hydrated magnesium sulfate, sulfate, what do you need to do? You need, you need to, write to write down the the, uh, the moles, the moles uh, of, magnesium of magnesium sulfate, sulfate along, along with the moles of water. water. So, so, first, first of all, magnesium sulfate, sulfate is what? MgSO4. I know MgSO4 would have been the formula for magnesium sulfate. But if, but if it is hydrated, it is hydrated I, need I need to also write, write H2O. H2O. Now, how now, how many of H2O? That is, that is given to me by the mole ratio. ratio. So, the, so mole, the mole ratio here is 1 is, one is to 7. seven. So, simply so, simply I will write 1 is to 7 here. here. But nobody but writes 1 MgSO4.7 H2O. The normal way of writing is MgSO4. 0.7 H2O. That is how the uh, formula is written. So it is MgSO4.7 H2O. That is the formula for hydrated magnesium sulfate, meaning it contains one mole of magnesium sulfate, which is anhydrous, and seven moles of water. Okay, and together it makes it a hydrated magnesium uh, sulfate. Okay, so. Let me, Let me just check my answers. answers. So, so this is uh, 14 is correct. Sorry. Sorry, I'll take another color. 14 is correct. 0 0.02 is also correct. 1 is to 7 is correct. And the formula is also correct. Okay. So technically, well, I can see one more sum over here. I'll solve it, solve it for you again. And... Okay, let me see how this has to be done. You can read the question, pause the video. And, and if you are not able to do it once again, you can do it with me. Fine. fine? Okay. okay. Going, Going to the, the last, last question. question. Dilute, dilute hydrochloric acid, acid was titrated, titrated with sodium carbonate, carbonate solution. solution. The equation is given to the uh, right. Actually, I had forgotten to put it, so I just uploaded it quickly. So there is so a reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate taking place, which is resulting in the formation of sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Uh, first, uh, first question we won't be doing because it's not a part of stoichiometry. stoichiometry. Okay, okay. Fine. fine. Now B2. Now B2. Calculate, calculate how many moles of hydrochloric acid were used. So let, so let us read what the data is about. 10 cubic centimeters of 0 0.100 moles per cubic decimeters hydrochloric acid were placed in a conical flask. Okay, so there is a conical flask. Okay. Uh, excuse me for this. Okay, so there is a conical flask here. Okay, okay. and, and uh, 10, 10 cubic centimeters. So the volume of uh, hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid, acid is given to you, and it, and it is given in cubic, cubic centimeters. centimeters. So how do you convert in decimeters by dividing by uh, thousand? thousand. So, that so that is equal to 0 0.010 cubic, cubic decimeters. So you have the volume given to you in centimeter cubic centimeters, which we converted into cubic decimeters by dividing by thousand. Then, then the concentration, concentration is given to you as 0 0.100 moles per cubic decimeters. So we, so we have, have the concentration, concentration we have the volume. Now what, now what is concentration? Uh, what is the uh, concentration? Concentration, concentration, concentration is number of moles upon volume. So, so how, how would you find the number of moles by multiplying the concentration, the concentration by volume? So, so number, number of moles is equal to concentration by volume into volume and concentration is how much? 0.100 into volume is 
0 0.010 and that gives you 0 0.100 multiplied by 0 0.010 that is sorry it all got erased that's 0 0.001 okay, okay. So, this so this answer is 0 0.001 fine, fine. use your, use your answer, answer in b2 and, and the equation for the reaction to calculate, to calculate the number of moles of sodium carbonate so now, so now they are trying to uh, make us compare the moles of hydrochloric acid to the moles of sodium carbonate so hydrochloric acid is 2 and sodium carbonate is 1 so, so, if, if the, the moles of hydrochloric acid were 0 0.001 that, that we just found out, the moles, the moles of sodium carbonate would have been half of 0 0.001 and that, that comes to 0 0.001, 0 0.001 divided by 2, which, which is 0 0.0005. So, how did you find the moles of uh, sodium carbonate? By Taking, taking half the moles of, of hydrochloric acid, acid. so 0, 0, 001 that, that gives you 0. 0. 0.0005 so 0. 0.005 right okay, okay. use your, use your answer, answer to be 3 to calculate the concentration of sodium carbonate in moles per cubic decimeters so now you tell me concentration has been asked to you so you know concentration is number of moles upon volume and they're, and they're talking about, about sodium, sodium carbonate, carbonate. And, sodium and sodium carbonate, carbonate you know the moles so moles are, are how much 0. 0.005 and what's, and what's the volume of sodium carbonate, carbonate? Is, it is it given to us that is, that is fine 16.2 the third or the fourth bullet point 16.2 cubic centimeters of sodium carbonate were required so 16.2 cubic centimeters is given to us we are going to convert into decimeters so 16.2 divided by 1000 that, that gives you 0. 0.0162 and, and that, that is, is going to give you the concentration so 0. 0.0005 divided by 0. 0.0162 and that's, and that's nothing but 0. 0.0308 0. 0.0308 which is approximately equal to 0. 0.03 one that's, that's your answer, answer right, right? Okay. okay simple, simple isn't it yeah, yeah. Now, now in another, in another experiment, experiment 0 0.02 0 0.02, 0 0.02 moles of sodium carbonate were reacted so you had, so you had another equation uh, another, another reaction in which uh, the, moles the moles of sodium carbonate, carbonate were different so, so let, let me just write the original, original equation below once, once again, again. So, so the, the original equation was 2 HCl plus Na2CO3 gives you 2NaCl plus H2O plus CO2 so now um okay yeah so how many moles of sodium carbonate were taken number of moles of sodium carbonate was 0 0.020 what's the ideal mole ratio it is 1 is 2 sorry it is 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1 okay i'm taking the numbers here i'm simply writing the numbers that are present here right 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1 so if 0 0.020 moles of sodium carbonate were taken and they are asking us to find out the maximum amount of carbon dioxide that could be formed now what's the relation between carbon dioxide moles and sodium carbonate moles sodium carbonate moles and carbon dioxide moles are the same, same okay, okay? Because, because the ratio, ratio is, is 1 is to 1 I'm just highlighting what I'm, what I'm trying to say so I'm, so I'm comparing now this, this sodium, sodium carbonate, carbonate with, with carbon dioxide, dioxide because, because they are asking us to find out the, the uh, um, maximum, maximum volume of carbon dioxide, dioxide that could be formed now the, now the mole ratio is basically 1 sorry, sorry it's basically 1 is to 1 right so technically, so technically over here, whatever, whatever are the moles, moles of sodium, sodium carbonate, carbonate they are going to also be the moles of carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide. So, we, so know we know that the moles of carbon dioxide, dioxide formed would be 0 0.020, 0 0.020 0 right? right? Okay. 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 So, you so you have the moles of CO2 which are 0 0.020 and 0 
and since it is rtp we need to think about one mole occupying 24 dm cube so if co2 has got 0.020 moles it will occupy x dm cube so how do you find the volume of carbon dioxide simply by multiplying the moles by 24 therefore volume of co2 is equal to moles into 24 so moles is 0.020 into 24 how much is that 0.020 into 24 that gives you 0.48 Fine. Fine. So this, so this is, is the answer. answer. And, and let us check our answers, answers with the marking scheme. scheme. This, this we've not done. done. This is not done. Okay, fine. Uh, point zero zero one is correct. Zero point zero 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 five is correct. Zero point zero three one is correct. And zero point four eight cubic decimeters is also correct. Well, so sums are correctly done. And I hope you have also done them correctly. If not, then I hope you've paused and watched my video. And trust me, stoichiometry is very easy and it's interesting. Uh, only it becomes very tough if it is not taught in the correct way. So I hope I could contribute to your learning in some way. Fine. So well, this is all on stoichiometry, and it took thirty six point. Nine ten, so around thirty six uh, minutes it took. It took uh, one, and one and a half minute more. I may say is nearing thirty seven minutes now. Well, so before it uh, touches thirty seven minutes, I would like to end this video, and I'm going to call it complete stoichiometry in thirty five minutes part two again. Okay, so thanks for watching my video. Stay blessed, and I hope this helped you in your learning. Bye bye.